All right, so um, we'll get back to those anagrams later. We have a matchup here between our first non-Nigerian competitor. There are a handful in this tournament that um, are coming from other areas, such as Ghana, Liberia. We have a couple players representing the UK and the US. Uh, majority of players competing are Nigerian, uh, but uh, Charles Tack Tacky Menson, a six-time Ghana Scrabble champion, Ghanaian Scrabble champion, against uh, Nigerian stalwart Olatunde Odawole. Fiki, I believe, he is known. Um, so... Uh, this should be a good matchup. Olatunde is a legitimately very strong player. Um, way back, several months ago, um, we had uh, in in our series, um, MGI also has a, a match play series called Word Wars, and Olatunde had an epic, epic match against Wellington Jigare, where Olatunde came out on top with, I think, just an incredible performance he might have even had a really big uh, comeback if i'm remembering correctly so ola tunde very strong i haven't seen charles compete but uh, he's doing very well in a tough field right now three and one with one of the higher spreads so this should be a pretty good game um i think everything is working okay knock on wood it feels like the some of the cams have been a little unsteady so bear with us if we happen to lose the player cameras or the board cameras we'll try to get those back as soon as we can but uh yeah the players are are potentially we see all that sunday there i think charles is making his way to the board i'm just gonna give the go ahead so um yeah, we got uh, four games in the books. This will be the last game before lunch break. Lunch break is not going to be all that long. And then we've got five more games in the afternoon. I'm going to have to pace myself. Um, it is possible, I think, I will have to engineer this. I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work yet from my end, but I think it's possible either today or tomorrow that none other than US and UK champion Austin Shin will be joining me to help out with some commentary. So that'll help me potentially say fewer words and make it through the day without losing my voice, which is gonna be so far so good, but it's gonna be tough. I like to talk too much, so we need somebody else to help. Um, so I'm giving the go ahead. to our players here. I'm not sure if Charles is there. I know Olatunde is sitting down. Um, he's sort of tough to see there, but hopefully when the game starts, you'll, you'll see him a little better when he leans in. Right now, he's having a nice lean back. Um, so yeah, not sure what to expect from this game. Let's see. We have, I've made a bunch of these thingamabobs um oh and it even has it even has the anagramming on it too so my my player cards here here's a little deep dive into charles you see a six-time national champion from ghana if you guys want to get a few more anagrams in while we're here Olatunde has started charles's timer wow okay so charles apparently maybe Taking too long a break or something. Not 100% sure. That's kind of surprising. Um, so let's see. He's Yeah, you can see his timer is started, even though it's a little blurred. Um, so that's surprising. I, I'm not sure I've seen this. I'm not sure I've seen this in, um, in live streaming where one of the players is uh late <laughs> to the board all right is it is he no that's that's uh 
organizers handling the tile bag there. So as soon as Charles gets back to the board, that'll be um, a, the cue to stop the clock and then they'll start the game from there. But that's, I haven't seen that before. So, um, Olatunde sitting there, cool as a cucumber, waiting for Charles to get here. Hopefully it doesn't take too much more time. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. So we had a really interesting game last round, of course, between um, Wellington, Jigare, and uh, who was our... And uh, Emmanuel Umujose. And that, that crazy, you know, finishing move of ditches, I'm trying to understand you know, what, what should be done there. That's a tricky situation. You see the racks from that game are still there. Um, so that was a very, it's just a, an unclear position. The thing that's un, the thing that's really unclear about some Scrabble late game situations is you're getting more and more information about what your opponent might have. Oh, did we? I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, <laughs> so I have to refresh some of the cameras here. I know that it can be challenging. We had a bunch of possibilities in place to try to alleviate some of the issues with the bandwidth that are um, that sometimes happen with the, with these broadcasts. Um, and uh, we've sort of reached reached the end of the 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 end of that line of all of our ideas. So we're sort of enduring some of this, the usual stuff. So let, let's see if we can get these cameras back with me refreshing cache. Hopefully not. At least we have um, lunch break if we can just get to this round to potentially fix some of this stuff up. So I'm just letting I'm letting those guys know that our cams are down. Oh, okay. So it looks like Charles is at the board. Um so they're they're going to get started because obviously they need to get started. So hopefully in short order um we'll get the board this that's pretty up oh, there we go okay fingers crossed okay let's get underway so charles going first he quickly plays what oh we lost that too okay that looks like a reasonable choice to make with almost any rack containing those letters of just foe for 28 the a on the star so oops just getting this all set up and toothed toothed the rack for olatunde that looks like it's going to be pretty good Oh, okay. So we see the we see that first set of tiles for Charles with the X on it. Looks like his play was clearly worth making, and we're gonna see Tooth come down pretty much immediately. Um, it actually, I wonder if Olatunde is gonna pause a moment and see that he actually has a slightly higher scoring positioning of this word. Whoops. Oh, he's gonna, all right, he's moving it to the bottom, but he actually has something even better here. So from his POV, you can see that actually he could play toothed here, getting points for the X. So he had an opportunity to score 77 points. Instead, he gets 72 for toothed the scary thing about his positioning also is that it really can get hit pretty hard to the triple here, right? Like this, this could hurt this spot right there. Um, it looks like nice play by Charles, in fact. Ooh, Lytic. <laughs> That's very, very nice. 
Um, that seems clearly best. So he didn't have anything super strong through or in that scoring spot that Olatunde made, which is kind of, uh, you know, dodging a little bit of a threat there for Olatunde. Um, let me see if I get this board a little bit more visible. Just want to make sure that it's here. Stand by just a moment. Fix this here, okay. All right, wow, what a rack for Olatunde here. Not a vowel in sight. He does have a blank. Looks like he's gonna play Dowly. He's trying to burn through as many tiles as he can. That makes some sense. Important to note that he could have potentially just played MY in this spot right here. For a very good score, comparatively. He scored 20 for Dowley. He could have scored 32 for just MY. But the reason that he's done this, and another play coming down instantly of Jaxi for Charles, that looks like a good play for him. But just to finish my point on Olatunde's move, he's burning through as many tiles as he can to try to get some more help for his Q, and you can see he's gotten it in the form of Chi. So, very, very quick. Uh, um, okay, so there was Olatunde's rack. It looks like he left lamp and a blank. So he did get that help for it. It's worth noting on that play of Chi, if that was his rack, not crazy to imagine playing just Qualmy here down to this Y. Um, but uh, I think Chi is a little bit better. Qualmy doesn't score quite enough points. Um, are they playing Blitz? That's the question that I am asking myself as well. Okay, Grease Eyes. Very nice play. Um, worth, again, just a quick trying to stay on top of the moves in the game. I'm pretty sure we're very likely to see a bingo for Olatunde in short order. He does have that blank that he should be thinking about. You know, what does he have? Tampala, as uh, David Eldar points out. Absolutely. That is actually the only playable bingo here. Worth noting, oh, wow, and look at that. Charles has hero eyes as a potential bingo as well. Probably other stuff too, rhizome. Um, so anyway, just to point out, on Olatunde's... Sorry, on Charles's move of Grease Eyes on his previous play, he actually had a pretty amazing move available. I'll show it to you from Olatunde's POV. So his move of Grease Eyes, the same letters would have played here. <laughs> AG writes for 64 points. It's probably not worth playing this just because this spot right here is quite dangerous. Um... So Grease Eyes isn't quite so bad. These spots are not as easy to hit. It's a three-point sacrifice. So yeah, from Olatunde's POV, he has one bingo and one bingo only, and it's Tampala. This is um, the highest scoring positioning that he can play with it. You could play it here too, but that's certainly a little riskier. This has the benefit of extending not quite so far to the triple lane, but... If you don't know this word, it is the only bingo option that Olatunde has. So you could easily see, and yeah, I know the players' heads are slightly cut off here. Um, we'll we'll try to fix that another time. So um, obviously, if there were one thing that you would be able to see, it would be somebody's head, facial expressions. Um, they're there, it's just like cut off at the top here. Um, so, oh wow, play mat. I think we're about to see play mat be played here. I assume. 
Um, I'm going to assume that this is going to get challenged. I would be I would be stunned if this doesn't get a, just a courtesy challenge just to make absolutely sure. Maybe Charles is going to give Olatunde credit for the word knowledge that he does indeed have. Nope, it is going to get challenged. So this is a huge, huge swing for a couple reasons. First reason, obviously it's good to take any phony bingo off the board. But secondly, had Olatunde played Tampala in this spot, I'm just trying to think about what the board would have looked like, but it might have made it much more difficult. For example, if Charles only sees the word hero eyes on his rack, that's easy to play right here. If you play Tampala in the spot you're supposed to, it forces Charles to, to see the word rhizome and to know the hook zoolitic. Right, So he has, even now, he has the play of rhizome hooking zoolitic here. Instead, he's going to play hero eyes, and that obviously still scores over 100 points. But Tampala, I believe, would have blocked all of that positioning. So this is an enormous, enormous swing. 103-point bingo here for Charles. And he's going to go up 265 to 127. That is a big swing, needless to say. And in fact, this is kind of fun. You think they should add... Sockhampton says, I think they should add play mat to the dictionary. It's a pretty reasonable play. It's a pretty reasonable try. Um, here, while, the, while things are blurry... Oh, okay. It's a little bit better now. But uh, from... From Olatunde's perspective now, he has place mat through this E. So he just played play mat. He, he, hopefully he'll be thinking about playing this here. Of course, something like Tamp is arguably better, scoring 43 points and blocking off the heroizes hook and heroized. Right, This hook is really scary. So even if you play something like place mat, you could potentially still give up a massive play here to the wrong draw. So Tamp might be worth playing um, just on that basis alone. But we'll see. Um, we'll see. Olatunde might prefer to play placemat just because it's so volatile, right? Like now you're losing. If you're in Olatunde's shoes here, you're losing by a ton of points, almost 140 Hopefully we get the player cams back shortly. Um, there we go. Uh, so making these crazy open spots c could potentially benefit him. Yes, pl plate platyasm, however you would say that word, also fits in this spot here. So um, we'll see. We'll see what Olatunde elects to do. I think Tamp is a very findable play here, even if you're not seeing these bingos, which include Placemat, Plate Man, Platiasm, and Malapert. <laughs> That's a lot. So it's a big, it is a big deficit for sure. So yeah, we'll see. Player cams, I know. It's a little finicky. It's not a ton that can be done about it. At least we have the board. That's really the number one thing that we have to keep alive to analyze the game. I'm going to do my best to refresh the player cams, but there's only so much I can do. So Olatunde having a think here. His opponent, Charles Taki Menson, got to the board a little bit late. All right, let's just, uh, we'll go back to, while we're having the issue seeing the board, we'll just go back to have a board that is visible. Um, so, you're, yeah, if you're Ola Tunde, your opponent got to the board a couple minutes late. Um, 
and uh, has proceeded to play a very nice double-double, Ulytic, and then bingo twice while challenging off a pretty plausible phony word, but not a word nonetheless, playmat. Tempala available on that turn. So, all right, I think it's possible Olatunde is getting ready to... Um, and uh, Dave says, Tamp plus five. Yeah, it's probably... I think you get a lot of benefits out of it. Obviously, you're not bingoing now, but you're blocking the Hero Eyes's spot. You can actually see um, on the main screen, even though there's no cams, you can see that Charles has drawn a D, right? So the D is really getting, you know, ready to hit in this spot right here. Um, whether there's anything actually good to do with it other than just something like Dong or Doob, probably Doob looks like a pretty good choice um, going down here. Oh boy, what's this? Playmate, or what? Hold on. Playmate is the play. Okay, so this is an interesting choice. I think it's not the best bingo. I think there are better bingos, and I do think Tamp was even better than the bingos. So this is obviously bingoing, always something that's good to do in, in a vacuum. This scored 64 points, maybe a little more difficult to overlap, but it's going to leave the heroized hook completely untouched. Um, so we'll we'll definitely see something like, I got to imagine, we'll see something like Doob go down, which is going to score a ton and keep Charles pretty well into the lead here. Um, oh, Palamate. Yeah, Palamate was also available in that spot too but this does look like it's playmate. All right, there we go. We got players. Um So yeah, if the board if the board gets too difficult to see, I always have the backup analysis board that hopefully is clearer for everybody to take a look at. Um do you play boot and retain DNG? So boot would go alongside playmate. I don't know. Dube is Dube is forty nine. <laughs> That's a lot. Forty nine points in that spot there. Um, hard hard to pass that up, especially because GNT is slightly better than GND. I think. Obviously, with this open eye here. Your NG leaves get a little bit better, not that much better. It would be nicer to have it would be nicer to have an eye of your own if you were gonna try to play. Well, maybe not on this board, actually. There's nowhere to put an ING bingo. So um Alright. Looks like Bongo holding on to the D. So I get the I get this rationale. This only scores 34 points though compared to Doob scores 49. So you're giving up 15 points to save the D. The odds of getting that much better of a play are not that good. Really interesting suggestion of goodbye for 45 to the Y of Dowley. Um, so goodbye scores 45, leaves NT, Dube scores 49, and leaves GNT. So those two plays are super close. I could easily see an argument for goodbye. Let's just show what we're talking about. So the, the, que the play in question, do you want to play goodbye to the Y, leaving NT, or do you want to play Dube down here? Instead, the play of Bongo does score considerably less. Um, so it's an interesting choice between some of the options here. Um, but uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty good overlapping play here if you want. 
your eye as you know on this turn your eye is drawn here to try to play on the triple but Olatunde actually his highest scoring play is in this spot underneath the z this is a really really good overlapping spot so the nice thing about playing in this spot as well is that it opens up a line that doesn't require an s this line here does require an s if you're going to play here so some advantages to this play um is very interesting to go back to charles's previous turn and try to tease out what was what was the correct choice here um bongo is not i don't think bongo is best but i don't think it's that bad i do think that giving up 15 points is a lot but doing it with a d in hand with the promise of playing in this spot later and blocking off this spot which does have kind of a dual threat of scoring and maybe some bingos fit there all right olatunde's made his play it looks like he played grice in that lower corner for 36 it's a reasonable choice i would think um and yeah let's just see we can't the board is kind of tough so maybe i'll just leave the analysis board on oh wow okay there was a play in fact hold on let's see what the rack was all right so charles played told from his rack of all consonants you can see it went through the o and e of um toothed and grease eyes there was a play that might have done slightly better in that same spot you could play the obscure admittedly very obscure uh six letter word dolent in that same spot in fact so rather than playing told in this spot where charles did dolent would have used one more letter of course at a cost of making an e hook but that's not really that big of a deal to make a, a an e lane there so just ever so slight improvement not really that big of a deal so told makes some sense definitely no need to exchange with good plays like that available and Olatunde is going to have to make a tricky decision here. It doesn't look like he has a bingo. I would assume that there's nothing wrong with simply using that spot underneath the Z here. I think that makes the most sense from his POV. Oh, I have the score. I need to update the scores. Sorry. I'm just... Uh... So Olatunde is way higher, sorry. So he's narrowed the gap a reasonable amount after his bingo and after Grice. And sure enough, he does play off. He actually tacks his N on, which the N might have helped him to bingo a little bit. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I would have kept it here. All right, looks like he's back to Charles. There we go. God, I thought my thing froze. The The score here, unless I have it wrong, is actually quite close now. It was hugely off after Hero Eyes, but then Olatunde bingoed and has, has scored a lot more than Charles here. Because Charles ran into that issue where he had seven consonants, whereas Olatunde has had pretty flexible tiles this whole time. So looks like a play, what was that play here? Dern? That's kind of interesting. That doesn't Oh, yeah. Hooking the D onto heroized, of course. Yeah, that makes that makes more sense. So play of Dern, that looks good. Of course, it gets you into trouble because you leave WU on your rack. So that's something to worry about. Um and Olatunde, to his VS containing leave, draws nicely. He draws that R, but it doesn't seem to be enough to get a bingo down here. So 
Am I frozen? No, it's here. All right. So Olatunde is going to have to probably try to shed this V as best he can. Um, maybe, I don't know, play like this if you want to do it. If you want to go a little further, you could put the V out in space. That doesn't really help too much. It also blocks the N, which maybe you'll need every now and then. Probably not. Um, Olatunde really is pinning his hopes probably on hitting something big from this E or C because these this area of the board is going to be next to impossible to bingo to. Tricky move for him. Um, not sure what I like. It's just a tough situation. Down 100. Both blanks used up. And he is going to play VA. I guess the thing that I kind of like about VA is when you don't hit your bingo, you could potentially play through this V and open up more space this way. There's some future there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's tricky. And yes, I, I see the board. Hopefully the analysis board being on screen helps you guys follow the action a little bit. Um, It's challenging for me when players decide to play upside down <laughs> because like, because now it's Charles's turn, right? But he's playing upside down. So I don't know how to account for that. I, I don't want to have like a, a hundred different scenes. <laughs> All right, he plays. Okay, so Charles looks like he's about to play Va. You see parallel to playmate there. Um in this in this spot right here he's played va from that strange rack so this is really opening up he kept two u's as well so that's a reasonable play if only because there's almost no other plays that you would want to put on the board there if you're charles but it's definitely giving ola tunde more of a chance to get back into the game and you can see He's drawn knifers, which actually does fit on the board right here. So I do fully expect to see knifers go down. If I'm going to show the unseen tiles, let's see how this looks when I do this with this many tiles. It might look terrible. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty bad extending out of the border of the scene that I had for it. But you can see the unseen tiles are primarily pretty good for bingoing, so maybe Olatunde can play knifers and then I don't really know where he's supposed to draw another one. Um, for whatever reason, that first O of Bongo looks like a G to me right now, and it feels like uh, it. I just keep seeing a G, which would be a totally different situation. Um, Something's I I don't see Olatunde's timer moving, so potentially again, am I frozen? No, I don't think so. Well, he's still thinking. The board camera might be frozen right now, but we'll see. I'm a little concerned that the timers aren't moving. But I definitely expect him eventually to play um knifers here. And that would be a scary play, but probably one that you have to do. <laughs> yeah, when, me when my opponent plays Va, they're definitely keeping, yeah, the best possible leave. Instead, they have <laughs> two U's. It's, you know, the thing about that play of Va is that there almost was nothing else worth putting on the board there. Um, so... Maybe an exchange would be warranted instead. Possibly, right? Because drawing that third U is going to be fatal there to your hopes of doing anything on the next turn. And Va doesn't even do very much. It scores a very low number of points to where exchanging might actually help. Um, maybe with that leave, are there things that you can eventually play to the Y of Dowley? I'm not actually sure. So... If Olatunde doesn't bingo here, he could potentially consider 
opening up the board with a play like this. I don't think that's better, but it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world just because it would it would give him more threats for the future. But NS, as nice of a leave as NS is, it's not good enough to sacrifice 28 points or whatever over this. So Knifers is the play. And this could easily get challenged, I guess. If Charles has any doubt, this is the sort of word that I could easily see being challenged, but it doesn't look like it doesn't look like there will be a challenge here. So instead, let's give Olatunde his normal number of points and check out the score. He's only six points behind. So he needs um, he needs something. Okay, this rack that I have for Charles is not necessarily his actual rack. Let's just go back and see. All right. So with this rack... Um, Charles, with his rack of BGPRTUU, is like, that is the worst possible thing to handle this spot underneath Knifers here. This is a pretty scary situation because he really cannot do much to address this area. And wow, look at Olatunde's draw. <laughs> A uh, very nice balanced rack for him. He did draw that U, but the rest of the tiles give Olatunde a lot of reason to be excited. So this game, which was all Charles, remember, after Hero Eyes, Charles was up 140 in this game. Of course, that was very short-lived as Olatunde immediately played Playmate and uh, eventually drew much more flexible combinations of Charles thereafter. But who would have thought that after an 140-point deficit, Olatunde would be trailing by only six and looking like he's got pretty good chances here. His tiles are so much better. He's got that S. He's got vowels that will allow him to play under the knifer spot if he needs to. So Charles is in quite a bind. Um... I'm not 100% sure what he should be looking to do here. There's almost nothing that scores anything at all for him. Um, brutal. Trying to come up with a good play for him to do here, and I just don't know what what that might be. Um <laughs> The first order of business is trying to see if there's any way you can block the underneath knifers, that triple, but he has no real way of doing that at productively at all. He just can't. There's no vowels that fit under any of these consonants with just the U. I mean, you could play ut here. Maybe, 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 <laughs> maybe he'll be tempted to just play ut. I really don't think that's a good play. Uh, correct, he cannot exchange. He cannot exchange. So hold on, let me try this. Um, let me try to get this. Copy. We're going to try to analyze this, knowing that he's going to play upside down. Okay. So, from Charles's POV, situation is this. I'm going to update. Oh, he's about to play something. Anyway, here's the situation for him. Uh, let me, uh, I hate that that spills out. I'll fix that another time. But you can see the unseen tiles are pretty good, but they're also very vowel heavy. So it's definitely a bit brutal that the only vowel that he can draw, sorry, the only consonant available for Charles to draw is an N. Then again, he has a lot of consonants, so he should be okay. All right, he plays Barry. That's kind of a nice idea, if only because if he draws one of the two ends available, he can play unbury for decent points to the triple. Still, though, that keeps GTPU. I don't know. I don't think that's enough of an upside. I think there probably had to have been something better. Anyway, it's all Atunde's turn now. And from his POV, he's looking at very different letters. 
There's now three in the bag. Three tiles in the bag. And he has a really nice rack. And he has his pick of plays that go underneath knifers. Um, so, yeah, now he can play unbury, in fact. But would you risk doing that and not cover up the spot underneath there? Um, really interesting. It's probably correct. Just looking at these looking at these tiles, there are a couple things that come to mind. The first is that it's going to be difficult to fit anything under here with those with this vowel set that's unseen to Olatunde. Cause look, what what can he what can Charles even have that fits in this spot right here with A A U in it? You can almost there's almost nothing. I don't even it's it's hard. So this spot is the only one that you can really see being played in. And what's he gonna do there? The worst thing that you can really imagine is something like Tam or something. Like that's the worst that I can get hit with. So playing something up here with Unbury looks like a really good way to score a ton of points and leave yourself great letters with that AI combination. Sorry, IA maybe. Anything like this is going to hit much harder for you. All right, he's going to play Mott, which this empties the bag but I think is a pretty reasonable choice here. Um, it's going to score quite well, prevent any plays from happening underneath. For some reason, I can't get Mott to appear in my sim. Yeah, Mott looks pretty good. I don't know why it's not, hold on. It's weird, my quackle isn't getting it to show up. Um, Okay, anyway, that looks pretty good. Oh, man, Charles is now deciding to play right side up. <laughs> Hold on. Can I undo that? Yes, sort of. Um, all right, so play of Mott goes down. That empties the bag. Unseen tiles to Charles are A-E-E-I-N-S. Nope, sorry. Hold on. A A E I N S. There. Okay. So here's the situation. Score of the game is also wrong. I'm sorry. There. Okay. This is all correct now. Those are Charles's tiles. Unseen tiles to him are correct, and the score is correct. So he's looking at a deficit that maybe he can close with an out and two. I don't know if unbury is going to be enough. Oh, oh, it's also important to note that Anberry is a word. Oh, man. So regardless, Olatunde's got 33 points in the, in the bank if he sees the word Anberry. Hello to Galvin in the chat. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, wow, really interesting. So... What should Charles do here? Um, does he have any, at least even a threat for an out and two that's worth doing? I guess he has a threat for like wheat. He can play wheat here for 30. And maybe does this allow him to win with unbury? Let's just see what happens. So wheat would score... 30 does that force oh wow it forces a play of wheat off of the w of va forces olatunde to either find anberry to salvage a tie or to play sane this is his only this would be olatunde's only winning play what makes that a winning play i'm curious Let's just play something else. Yeah, you gotta, oh, because you have to block Unbury. That's it. That's why. So this is the two, the, the, the combination that has to happen here. 
is Charles will have to play Wheat and then rely on Olatunde both missing and Barry and failing to block Unbury. That's it. That's the only way. <laughs> So that is, needless to say, that is a very tricky, tricky sequence. That, I mean, it's tricky. It's a little trickier than many endgames. It's, it's solvable. It's within the realm of, like, teasing this out. I would give myself some chance of figuring some of that out during the game. <laughs> right? Like you, So in this situation, mathematically speaking, Charles is lost he can't win but he can come up with this pot potential sequence that can induce Olatunde to make a mistake and it's definitely possible it's definitely possible it's within the realm of possibility that you would not think to extend Barry to Anne Barry uh penned is there no such thing as penned and tegu to upend. That's interesting. Let's try that. So penned. That would lead to a tie game. Um, Anberry scoring 33. Oh, tegu and upo. So Anberry scoring 33. Tegu scores 18. That gets Charles to within 7. But it would still be a 7 point loss for him. Um, Tegu and Upo. Oh, right. Yeah, let's see. Are there other wins other than Anberry? Let's see. Could it force Anberry? Uh, oh, no. It looks like by allowing Olatunde to simply play vowels off of the W, that's why Wheat is better. Because even though Anberry scores 33... You can still get 30 points playing off of this W here in the in the corner. So that's that's why a play like Wheat performs well, because you block off this opportunity for Olatunde and force him to only have Anberry as his 30 point play. So geez. Geez, oh man. Um tricky. So if Charles is able to come up with this, this will be quite epic. So it's it's important that he not play Unbury first. It's very it, so note that the two plays that Charles needs to win the game are he needs to play Unbury here and he needs to play a big W play. But in order for him to get both of those, he has to play here first. And hope that Olatunde misses this one because this spot is so much easier to think of, right? You're looking at this triple and saying, wow, I really want to play here. This one is not as easy to think of. You could miss it. And Olatunde only has three minutes left on his clock. So if you throw him a curveball here, if you're Charles, you could potentially generate an interesting situation that would take more than three minutes to, to solve. So, boy, am I curious to see. I am so curious to see what the play is going to be here. Um, yeah, I really hope to see Wheat come down. It's going to be total chaos, I think, if we do see Wheat as the play. And hopefully the board camera can last with us. I think we'll we'll try to refresh all these links at lunch break. Which, by the way, we will be having lunch break after round five. So, um, take it, we'll take a break. And then come back with round six through ten. Um, that should take that should take us, uh, boy. Yeah, that's gonna take us pretty pretty deep into the afternoon here. So I've been up since four a.m. because I'm a sicko that likes doing stuff like this. Um, but yeah, these guys are at, they these guys have been playing since nine a.m. local time um and uh they are reaching a well-deserved uh lunch break point here but this is oh it's so interesting we just need this board camera to hold up for like a few more minutes and see eventually what charles plays here um i see how blurry it is i don't really know what to do to fix it at this point so 
Um, I can try to refresh the players just so we can see what Charles is thinking here. Um, see if we can get that going. And hopefully the board's not, the board camera is not frozen. I think Charles's time is slowly ticking down. So. Or at least I think it is bit by bit. Okay, there it is. Wow. Okay. So some kind of lag spike or something just happened. And we see wheat is the play <laughs> by analysis of the pixels. That's right. So wheat is the play. So now we come up with this situation of under duress. Can Olatunde now he will be down after that play 418 to 404. Um, very simply, Olatunde can just, I wonder, we saw the clocks stop for a moment. Is it possible that Olatunde challenged something out of desperation? Um, I'm not sure. So either way, from Olatunde's POV, the unseen tiles are Pung. He has Pung. Charles would have Pung. That doesn't play out anywhere. So Olatunde needs to simply be thinking about the berry hook. And there are two ways he can win from here. He can simply see Anberry. So the, the extension play, Anberry. A soft, fleshy tumor in horses. Beautiful. That's wonderful verbiage. Thank you to the dictionary for that. He can either see that himself or he can see the threat of unbury and try to block it now. Unfortunately, the only way he can score enough points to win the game is he has to play sane here. And the reason that would win the game is that after you know normal plays like yup, he can then play via or AI at the top of the board and secure himself a two point win. That would be his way of winning the game. That's the only sequence that does it according to Quackle, our engine. Anberry is a much cleaner way of doing it. The fact that we do not see Anberry on the board yet makes me concerned that Olatunde is not thinking of it, but maybe he is thinking of it and he just wants to make absolutely sure. It looks like he's just checking carefully. He's playing something towards the lower part of the board. So this now puts the onus, looks like he plays Sat with Azo, getting as many points as he can, taking a narrow lead again. So this is now the situation where it's back to Charles, and now the onus is on Charles, and he does it. He plays Unbury. Wow. He has done it. Amazing. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. He has come up with the crazy sequence of wheat and then relying on a miss of the berry extensions and played unbury himself and now he's up 451 to 423 that is a really really impressive performance olatunde has outplays here he can play ain alongside unbury and that's going to that will only get him if he plays that which he's about to do you can see he's headed towards that part of the board playing ain is only going to get him to a 2 point loss as the final that's what i have as a final so obviously the players will need to and i don't know if there were any challenges that we didn't account for if olatunde or if charles for example happened to challenge a word of olatunde's and we didn't catch that which i really don't think happened that would be enough to swing the entire game here but i don't think that occurred and i think we have a final score of 451 to 449 an amazing game here in many, many ways. So Charles up 140 at one point in the game, withstanding a furious comeback from Olatunde. 
and playing a really amazing endgame to squeak this out. Make no mistake, Olatunde had the win here if he thinks of the extension and Barry. But it's not a gimme. That's not that easy to think of that extension. And this goes back, I mean, this goes back to that original play of Barry, which frankly, I wasn't sure I liked this play of Barry. But the fact that, you know, you're playing a human being, the reason that this play of Barry doesn't sim well in our analysis engine is that look at the opponent's tiles right there's two n's three a's there's a oh sorry you can't see that but unseen at this point in time on the play of barry are three a's two n's and a u so you're basically just giving your opponent an easy 33 points every time they have those letters but if you're gambling here that your opponent won't think of those and that you will, maybe this sort of endgame happens, which, which, yeah, a very confirmed genius. <laughs> I don't know about that, but there's definitely, like, if you're going to make a mistake, quote unquote, at least make one that has some kind of rationale or plan behind it, which this does, right? Like, this at least has a plan. And uh, Charles executed that plan in this endgame. That's crazy. That's amazing. All right. That is an epic, epic game to end our morning session on. So, of course, we are going to do our absolute... Yeah, totally. Insane to win from that point, as as Dave says. So, all right. We're going to do our best. It's lunch break now. That gives us a little time to see if we can get some of our camera feeds a little bit sharper. I don't know if that's going to be possible. But we will certainly do our best. But uh, we'll just uh, we'll cut to our um, promo screen, and um, we'll do some anagramming for a little bit of time. I think the games resume in forty minutes, so we'll go on forty minute break. And anybody that wants to hang back, you can solve some anagrams here um, during that break. So. Wow. Hopefully we get some games this afternoon that are that high caliber. And uh, we'll see also about getting some co-commentators in the booth. Tentative plan, either today or tomorrow, I'm not sure, uh, to get Austin Shin on board to do some commentary with me. So we'll see if that materializes for today. Um, but yeah, let's go on break and see you guys in about 40 minutes.